Okay, now well, let's begin. Um, hello, everybody, uh, to my session on how to get into DevOps or the synergy of developers and operators, which somehow I duplicated. So, um, who am I? I'm uh, Lars van Buell. I uh, um, am a free and open source uh, software uh, supporter since uh, at least 2005. Um, done some studies. Uh, I have an interest in electronics and uh, I work for uh, Zero40 Lab as uh, DevOps um, with some security as well. Um, I'm also a module maintainer. I maintain, for example, the rocket chat module and the OAuth auth discovery module. And I maintain the superchat.me service. Um, sometimes I do some security audits and uh, Voltaire by, for example, this uh, session today. Well, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about uh, DevOps. Specifically, how do we have developers and um, operations or operators, and how do they uh, um, view their world, and how can we combine this into um, a single uh, field where we can all be working and have a good uh, experience for the, our users? Um, I'm going to show how these two conflict with each other, how we can resolve this conflict, and how we can uh, get better and win at it. And if we have a little bit of time over left, I will also talk about how the security uh, uh, flow into this. And then I would like to do a Q&A and discussion if anybody is up to it. So what is the problem? Well. Both developers and operators have a different world view. Um, developers, they want to have the newest tools, and they want it now. They want to um, uh, use the newest languages. Uh, they also tend to have uh, this philosophy of uh, it works on my machine. So um, they are less concerned with that it works for everybody um, most of the time. And they're not fast with running more tools because uh, new tools are cool and we need more tools to uh, do the work we're doing. Operators, on the other hand, are all about uh, stability. They they want uh, the more stable something is, the better it is. The uh, longer it uh, keeps running, the better it is. So they have the philosophy of it works on my server or it works on my container, depending on the flow that uh, you've uh, chosen as a company. Uh, they also care a lot about reproducibility. They want to be able to validate that something works repeatedly and reliably. And if they have an issue, it's all about uptime. They want to have the system working most of the time. So uh, the more time, um, of the, the higher the uptime is, the better they feel about their work. So we have these two fields. And how can we merge them? So how can we combine these two different fields? They a little bit um, opposites of each other while still supplying the same end product for the clients, the uh, users of our products. Well. While we are different, we also have a lot of uh, commonality. We, uh, it's a small world after all. So we all share the, uh, the following likes. We, we are lazy. We, we don't like to do, um, if we can do something with less amount of work, we like to do it that way. We like to automate because automation makes our work easier. And if you have to do less, type less, it's faster for us to do and we can get more work done. And also we're all, all really busy. We have enough work to do as is. We don't need to take on additional work um, 
for the the, the um, for what we are doing already. We also have the similar dislikes. We dislike repeating things over and over again. We uh, dislike having to apply patching. We, we, we really just want everything to work. And we don't really like to work at uh, 10 o'clock at night or on the weekends if we can um, uh, prevent it. So sometimes we have to because of uh, uh, limitations or restraints from uh, upstream, but most of the time we prefer to make, uh, only work during the times that we set aside for it. And we really dislike writing some types of documentation. And the reasons are obvious, we're already busy enough. So if we can not do something, we prefer to not do it. So um, we, if we take a deeper look at the developer view, we see that we're mainly uh, looking at the code first. We, we, we um, um, care that uh, everything is structured nicely, that we have enough testing, that, we, that everything is um, understandable by all of our other developers. We also like uh, new features because uh, new features um, is a lot um, more enjoyable to work on than fixing all features that are not really working. And um, we also have to uh, work on bug fixes, of course, because yeah, we all make mistakes or something has changed that wasn't conveyed correctly enough. So that we um, have to work on these things. Now the operator view is, is, is a slightly different. It, mainly looks at all these graphs and, 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 and diagrams. It's, they are about stability. They want to um, have system work, working uh, most of the time and just um, uh, not, not being too busy, not being um, do, uh, doing nothing at all. So th that's where their focus is. They, they, they look for stuff like uptimes and um, they have to do uh, 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 the, to apply the, the fixes and the, basically bug fixes and patches on system, and they want to do this on predictable times. So they schedule in their updates. They uh, uh, don't want to do these ad hoc, ad hoc things, but they want to have um, um, automation in place, like uh, uh, using Ansible or Puppet or, or Chef or any of these other tools to. Um, make it easy for them to predict when something will happen and that it will happen. And they also uh, worry about the networking, um, not as much as a network operator, but uh, more than a developer generally has to do. So these are conflicts that they have seem to have at least different goals. They, they, they seem to be op uh, opposite of each other. So a developer, um, uh, likes to use the latest versions of um, of libraries of, of software, while operators look for stability. They don't want to have to update the code base all the time, so they want to uh, keep have it working and keep on working. Uh, developers uh, work with uh, small incremental changes. So um, they really don't care if you have a uh, hundred commits in a day that have to also be processed. Well, operators prefer big incremental changes so that they can test it and can verify that everything will work with this new version. And developers are all about fixing it yourself. So if you have an issue, you dive in and try to fix it yourself while well, operators Generally, if they have an issue with uh, the software, they will give it back to developers to you fix it now mentality. So there's a little bit of uh, conflict there. Well, we can resolve this. There's some resolution available. Um, we all want good products for our clients and our users. We, we want them to be happy with the features that they have. We want them to be happy with how responsive everything is and how uh, everything is uh, up and running all the time, or at least most of the time. 
we also don't want to have to repeat work. So if, um, for example, a developer has made something, we don't want to have the operator repeat basically that, but just take what the developer made, maybe improve upon it, and then give it back to the developer to both share on this new uh, um, standard that we can, uh, uh, can emerge. And we want to do the things that we are good at. We, we, as a developer, we don't want to have to worry too much about the operation side of things. And as an operator, we don't want to care too much about how this is developed. We just want to care enough that we can exchange uh, um, the uh, ideas and see where things are going well and where they are not going well. And that all comes down to being to go, uh, to being together is stronger and um, if you go together uh, work together and be uh, a team we um, will have all these things that we want to have but what if we just combine the two what if we go for the win and we become a devil we can then work in, in either of these two fields so either in the, as a developer or as an operator and combine the, the concerns that we have. We can write automation, these uh, Ansible scripts, these uh, Puppet or Chef scripts, whatever flavor you like, we, we can uh, make these. We can start writing them during development, adding the requirements in as we add them to, uh, to the code. And then uh, keep using the same scripts that we use for development on the operation side and they don't have to be written again and we can ask help from the other side as a developer you're not as used to write these scripts but operators are so if we can um, um, uh, cross-pollinate these ideas we can improve upon them um, same um, side of the coin for the operator Developers usually have a lot more experience with a specific library and the quirks that it has because they had to solve the problems around it. So asking the developer how they do that and, and what they did to uh, make that work can help a lot to get faster on the road. Then there's one side that I didn't mention yet. That's security. Um, we can uh, integrate this as well. Um, security is a little bit different than the other two. Um, it's, it has to do with, with, with auditing uh, the, the software, um, making sure everything is uh, not only working as designed, but also you cannot misuse what is designed for some other purpose. Um, we, this can be done, for example, with, with pen testing and pen testing technologies like um, Let's call again. Uh, fuzzing. Uh, uh, fuzz testing means that we uh, expose an application to a lot of different types of inputs to see if all the code paths are working as we want them to do or not. Um, in security, we also watch uh, the CVE and the MITRE. Uh, frameworks, so the, the common vulnerabilities and exposures um, and the implementation is like the MITRE and the NIST uh, exposed to the world so that we can uh, uh, catch on if we, there's a risk for the software that we use and then um, patch it or, or uh, fix it or schedule uh, an update or maybe even force an update depending on risk and on um, whether uh, this is something we have to jump on now or that we can do later on with the mitigation until we get to it. So um, in, uh, what we get is something more like this. We get layers of different type of uh, work that you do as a dev sec So in uh, conclusion, um, DevOps is, um, not really uh, a function on its own is basically uh, the capability to work in either field of operations or in development and um, being an expert in how do we communicate with either of these fields so that we can get better products uh, fewer bugs and um, 
fast, the delivery. And this is my presentation. Uh, are there any questions that uh, I can answer? Please continue. Hmm. What do you think is the most logical, accessible, easy start for dev and ops fields to touch base? Um, The way I approach this is by first getting into, uh, on, if I'm taking the developer point of view, the first thing I do is um, uh, start understanding how does my system work. Um, try and uh, setting up my, uh, uh, for example, my web browser myself instead of having a script to it. And if we use scripts, uh, understand what these scripts do. And then, um, talk with somebody from operations during lunch, uh, ask them what are the issues that they run into, and th those types of things. Um, the other thing that really helped me is um, starting to use uh, basic Ansible as um, a, a small incremental way of automating uh, some of the work I do. So uh, you start off with an Ansible script that basically uh, only does uh, all the, uh, the the installation and then you add the capability for example to uh, for an Ansible script that installs a web browser to also install um, the configura configuration for uh, the, the for the key host then add the capability to have uh, different key hosts together then add the capability to set some settings um, uh, differently b between those uh, different uh, virtual hosts configurations that you have. Um, basically, improving and improving and improving, just like we do with software. Are there any more questions? Does anybody want to um, share their views on uh, DevOps and how they uh, incorporate it, in it, uh, the, it into their uh, professional life? From a security point of view, what tips can you provide for front-end developers? Yes, this is, um, um, security is really hard for, uh, the, from, for the front-end perspective to do. It seems like it's all out of your hand. This is not really the case. Um, we can, um, for example, um, watch out that we develop with uh, uh, proper uh, TLS certificates. Uh, there are uh, ways of having your own development uh, certificate that will just work on your machine. Uh, other things that we can do is we can um, uh, watch out, uh, for example, if we use libraries uh, on from NPM, um, are there updates for this? And what are they? And uh, can we... Um, uh, is somebody actually checking if this is uh, secure? Uh, personally, I don't use NPM. I use Yarn to um, get my uh, um, JavaScript dependencies because Yarn will um, add more, uh, um, hashing uh, to the list of um, the deployments so that um, I can be sure that even if somebody messes up on NPM or on the uh, files supplied there, um, that I actually installed the same version as the one that I previously previously had. 
Um, let's see, is there more? Um, the other things that uh, I would like frontenders to uh, think about is uh, where do you store the data? Um, you can store data in many places in, in, in the front end, but um, for example, uh, 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 storing the access token in the URL is not that great from a security point of view. Might be handy for some use cases, but it, it's something that should be discussed and uh, thought about from, from uh, is this where we want this? Um, uh, where do we store, for example, the uh, authentica authentication token, the JWT token, if we have a uh, JWT protected endpoint. And of course, um, basic uh, code hygiene uh, stuff like a linter um, um, uh, uh, testing of the of, of uh, the, the uh, uh, with uh, some test framework will greatly help with making sure that everything is um, not doing something that you don't want to do. Are there any more questions? Or does anyone want to join the discussion on uh, with, with the video and the audio? Well, if there are no more questions and um, nobody wants to join, then uh, I hereby uh, end my session. And uh, I thank you all for uh, the attention and uh, I hope you learned something.